Hello everyone. <coughs> so uh, last week we have been studying about moisture and this week we're gonna study about the disadvantage and advantage of microbes in food. So before we continue, we will take a look back at uh, the explanations of moisture and uh, questions and answers. So in here, first question, uh, and I remember that in this moisture uh, lessons, uh, the, um, the questions are a little bit tricky and kind of difficult. So uh, we need to take a look closer at it. First, all living organisms require water for survival. So it's true. So all living organisms require water. So we need to remember this always. Uh, I was thinking like um, some organism doesn't need water, but all living organisms need water. The second, perishable foods typically have low moisture content. So perishable food has high moisture content because it make it, uh, because water create the environment for microbes or living organism to live. So it has to have like higher moisture content so that it make, to make it like perishable. Number three, active water in food is usually bound to other ingredients like protein, salt, and sugar. Active water is free and not bound to any other ingredient. This is fact, so we have to remember, remember it. There's no explanation, I, I don't think so. Number four, microbes can grow quickly in perishable food with high moisture content, regardless of temperature. It is true because with high moisture content, it have ha higher like water content. So, <clears throat> and um, here they also say that regardless of temperature, so any temperature, but if temperature is suitable, it make it like grow more rapidly. So it regardless of temperature. Remember this. Number five, drying and strong salting of food can extend their shelf life by increasing the level of free water. It decrease, reduce the amount uh, the amount of water there because it's drying, so that's, that's why it's false. Mold and yeast can grow in drier condition compared to bacteria. Yes, so mold and yeast can like live in um, lower moisture content, like bread or some, some other things. And you just remember like mold and yeast, like making bread and it's kind of dry there. Number seven, Bacteria spores are highly vulnerable to drought condition. And we need to remember the fact that bacteria spores are the outer layer of the bacteria. So it's really resistant to drought and survive in harsh environment condition. It's like a, a armor suit of the bacteria. Number eight, vegetative cells of bacteria are less resistant to drought than the spores. It is true here because it's less resistant to drought compared to the spores. It is inside and it's softer. Number nine, bacteria's, bacterial spores can begin to grow as soon as they encounter the suitable conditions. Yes, it's true. It's domain outside and uh, will start to grow when it when the conditions become suitable. Number 10, high moisture content in foods is beneficial for extending shelf life. Uh, here, they explain that it's false because high moisture content in food shorten their shelf life because it has higher water inside and higher water make microbial microbial growth increasing therefore it will make the food likely to get spoiled 
Number 11, free water in foods is often tightly bound to other ingredients that we already uh, learned in the second question, like it does not bound. Number 12, salting foods has no impact on the level of free water. Putting salt on food reduces the water inside by binding it to the salt. That is why when you eat a lot of salt, like salty foods, uh, you tend to drink more water because it reduces the water, the free water inside your body, and it's the same with the food. So it will have impact on the level of water. Number 13, drying foods decreases their susceptibility to microbial growth yes because it re reduced the moisture so it decreased the susceptibility decreased the ability to uh, grow from microbes number 14 most bacteria can grow in extremely dry conditions not true because they need water so extremely dry of course they can okay they can like still um, survive but uh, not growing you know number 15 bacterial spores remain domain indefinitely and never grow it's wrong because uh, when there's some good condition they still like growing and not like indefinitely yeah it's just like extended period Number 16, moisture content in perishable food has no impact on their susceptibility to spoilage. It's, of course, it has no, uh, it's already like wrong because moisture has influences like really significantly to the susceptibility to the spoilage. Number 17, drying foods increases the amount of free water available for uh, it increase drying and increased water is false already number 18 molds and yeast are less resistant in drought than bacteria it is false because they are generally more resilient to drought compared to most bacteria they can still okay in drought condition so it is like less resilient number 19 Bacterial spores are highly vulnerable to the environmental conditions. The bacterial spores are really strong, therefore it's not vulnerable. It still survives and will be. Number 20. Vegetable cells of bacteria can remain domained for a long period in dry condition. It is false because only the spores, not in the inside. Yeah. So, we will continue to disadvantage and benefit microbes and also in this lesson we study about a case study so it will be really interesting to do yes let's start a few moments later okay so let's get ready three two one go all microbes in food processing are harmful to health. All harmful false. Number two, microbial activity can lead to various deterioration phenomena in food. I think it's true because it's make food like good or bad. Yes. When the number of microbes in food increase, the quality of the food typically improves. I don't think so. Only few good microbes, so it's false. Poorly clean work tools and environments can accelerate food spoilage by allowing microbes to enter. Yes. We always have to clean the knife, we always have to clean the spoon, we always have to clean the table where making food so that microbes can be reduced. So it's true. Of course. 
germs can be spread through hands, potentially contaminating of com- contaminating food. Yes, it's, it can, it can be. Working methods have no impact on the cleanliness of food. It has impact, so it's false. A person who is sick or infected cannot transmit diseases through food. Of course, when you are sick, you cannot make food for people like to eat, like for example in restaurant, so it's false. Microbes can cause food poisoning and infectious diseases cannot spread through food or water. It can, so it's false. Yeah. Number nine, all microbes that spread through food can multiply within the food. Yes, yes. I, here they say all. I, but I, I still think that it's it's true. Oh. Yeah, with that all, it's always false. Handling of food stuff and the cleanliness of the work environment has no impact, no impact. So it is, I believe that is false. Yep. Microbial activity always improves the color of food products. No, it makes the food looks disgusting. So sometimes. Number 12, sliming is one of the deterioration phenomena caused by microbial in food. Yes. So when you uh, buy some kind of old food, you will see that they have a, a, a layer of slime um, that is a little bit um, sticky. Yeah. So I think it's true. It's from microbes. Acidification is the phenomenon that in high the quality of food. Maybe. No. Okay. So it's, it's not improved. <laughs> Gas formation in food is a sign of freshness and safety. Yeah, if you buy chicken or you buy pork and uh, you see that they the plastic bag is a little bit bigger so it's gas formation so it's not fresh it's it's uh, the food is all going to be expired especially when you see in the minced meat food quality improves when there's a sign a high microbial load no with more microbes it's generally bad Microbes cannot enter food if work to an environment are clean adequately. Adequately, it still can enter, of course, in the air even. even. So it's false. Foodborne diseases cannot be transmitted through contaminated hand. It always go with hand. So. Yes. Food handling method have no bearing on the cleanliness of the working environment. It has Im- impact by handling. If handling is bad, then the food is not clean. Yes. Number 19, food can transmit infectious di- diseases even if there's no efficiency in food handling or environment. Yes, I believe so. No. So, not infectious diseases. Like, okay. The risk of health hazard decreases as the cleanliness of work and the environment improves. Yes. Okay. In the case. Yeah. Let's take a look at the case study. A local bakery has been experiencing issues with the quality of its bread products. Customers have reportedly instant of mold growth and spoilage shortly after 
purchasing grade, management suspect that contaminated could be the root of the problem. Highly. Yes. No. Okay. Okay. They said that it can be the growth by the microbial microbial contamination. They have taken step to review the processes and improve hand hygiene practice. Improperly clean work. Yeah, they said that microbial contamination. So it's true. Yeah. The bakery management can rule out the possibilities of the microbial contamination if they found color defects. Uh, yeah. Because it has like mold growth, so maybe it affect the color. So let's true. No. Okay not color okay the management is solely responsible for addressing the pastry quality issue with no bearing on customer health of course they have to have to take care of the customer health so the management not only make sure that the food the pastry is good like delicious but also the health of customer in case of contamination so it's false yes so uh yep so we finished the study today and if it's too fast you can uh, like slow it down and uh, read about the case management once again yep thank you so much